Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's math channel. Um, in this video, I'm going to go through question number four from the June 2014 uh, C3 Edexcel GCE paper. Um, this is a question about graphs and functions and transformations. And it tells us that there is a figure one here which shows the part of a graph with the equation y equals f of x, where x is an element of the real numbers. They didn't tell us the equation of the graph. They've just told us or you know what it basically a few points on it it looks like a modulus type of graph but they didn't tell us that but it goes through the point p which is 0 11 and the point q is 6 minus 1 where that point of the graph is then it says uh, sketch on separate diagrams a graph of y equals the modulus of f of x so you got to find the modulus of this modulus graph basically got to draw it and also we got to draw um, the graph of y equals 2 times f of minus x and plus 3. Um, so these are all dealing with transformations. On each diagram show the coordinates of the points corresponding to P and Q. So we have to we have to write down or we have to show what happens to P and Q and draw the graphs. So let's get started with part A which is drawing Y equals the modulus of F of X. Okay so this is a, a pretty simple type of transformation. Basically you've got to see whether the modulus sign incorporates the whole of the function inside it or if you and you have something where it's just the x part of the function which is inside the modular sign if it's the whole of the function that refers to a vertical type of change and if it's inside the function like this then it refers to a horizontal type of change so we've got this type of change here and basically what happens is everything which is below the x-axis is reflected in the x-axis um, so all the uh, x, all the y coordinates which are negative become positive, and all the y coordinates which are positive stay positive, and all the x coordinates don't change wherever they are. So for example, here we have zero eleven, that stays as it is completely, because it's you know the y y coordinate is positive, so it won't change. But this point Q, the x coordinate will stay the same, but the y coordinate is now going to become one so it's basically this point will reflect in the x-axis and it will look like a strange type of w shape so basically i can say that the point p will still be the same which is zero uh, was it 11 yeah zero 11 so the point p will still stay as zero 11 what have i done there let me just write it a bit better than that so p will stay as zero and 11 i'll put it over there Okay, and Q now will be um, reflected upwards. So let me just draw this part of the graph. Has it, have they drawn it there as well? Yeah. Okay, so I'll draw it going past there a bit, like this. Okay, and then what's going to happen is it would have gone down. Okay, but it, it's not going to go down now. And what's going to happen is it would have then been the V at 6 minus 1, and it would have gone back up again. So it would go something like this. Okay, so... Um, What's going to happen, instead of going down, it's going to be reflected up in the x-axis. So that point at the bottom will now go up here and look like a strange type of W. So this is Q, and this is 6. Instead of minus, um, instead of minus 1, it's going to be plus 1. So that's, that's how the diagram looks. This is Y equals F of the modulus, sorry, of Fx. Okay, that's how we have to draw it, and that's all we need to show coordinates of P, the point the coordinates of Q. Okay, so that's that done. Now we've got to go to the next one, which is um, the, the graph of Y equals 2 times F minus X plus 3. Okay, so I'm going to put here P and Q. We'll start off with where they are, 0, 11, and Q is 6 minus 1. So I'm going to think about all of these separately. So if we've got Y equals 2, F minus X plus 3. So I'm going to first deal with F minus X part. Okay, that's what that, what's that going to do? Well, that why am I going to do with f minus x part first? Because you always start when you're doing transformations, which are combinations, with what's inside the function, and then you deal with what's outside the function. Okay, and when you're dealing with the ones inside the function, you should remember that if there's a combination inside the function uh, of different ones here, there's only one, so it's not a problem, but if there's a combination of things inside the function, you do the opposite of bid and mass. So you start with the things that are adding, and then you go to the things which are multiplying so here we're going to deal of course 
it's it's like you f minus x is basically um, where you have to multiply all the x coordinates by the reciprocal of minus one. It's kind of like a stretch, but actually becomes a reflection in the y axis. So all the x coordinates are multiplied by minus one. Okay, so for p it won't change. All the x coordinates are multiplied by minus one. This stays as zero. The x the y coordinates are unchanged. This stays as eleven. And for q you multiply the x coordinates by minus 1, so this will become minus 6 and minus 1. So basically, it's reflecting everything in the y-axis. That's what's going to happen first. Now, the second thing that we have to do with is what's outside the function. And with those, we've got 2 times the function plus 3. So we deal with things outside the function in the same order as bid mass. So I'm going to deal with the multiplication part first. So I've got 2 times f minus x. So I'm now dealing with this 2 part. Okay, so um, 2 times the f minus x. Now, when it's outside the function, the x coordinates don't change. So this will still be 0, and this will be minus 6. They don't change. But the y coordinates are multiplied by the scale factor 2. Okay, so you're going to multiply by 2, so it'll be 11 times 2, which is 22. And this is minus 1 times 2, which would be minus 2. So that's a vertical stretch of factor 2. Okay, so that's what's going to happen next. And the third thing that happens is you have to add 3 to the whole function. So you've got 2 times f of minus x and then plus 3. So if you deal with the plus 3 part, then we have to basically, um, again, it's outside the function. So only the y coordinates are affected. You add 3 to all the y coordinates. So the x coordinates are unchanged. So this still says a 0. This still says a negative 6. But this is added 3 to it, so it becomes 25. And you add 3 to minus 2 gives you 1. So these are the final points or positions of P. And this is the final position of Q after this transformation. So now we can just plot those points. I know P is 0, 0.25, which is going to be up here somewhere. And Q is 6 or negative 6 and 1. So let's say that's negative 6 and say that's 1. Let's put it a bit lower. That's going to be where Q is, negative 6 and 1. And it's going to have a V shape just as above, but this will be where the point of the V is. And you can just draw the other half of it, try and make it look symmetrical. And there we have your graph of Y equals 2 times F of minus X plus 3. Okay, so that's the answer to this question. I hope that was clear. So it's a combination of transformations, and that's a, a nice way to deal with it. So that's question number uh, part B done. And now for part C. Part C tells us that the equation of the curve is given by f of x equals a times a modulus of x minus b minus 1, where a and b are constant. State the values of a and the value of b. Okay, so for this, um, it's a pretty simple question to deal with if we just think about transformations. If we think about the parent function being y equals the modulus of x. That's how like uh, all these modulus functions will start. So the parent function would look something like this. And what's happened to this parent function is it's been transformed. Okay, It's been transformed in such a way that it's moved um, and it's been also, you can say, reflected. Uh, sorry, and, um, and, and stretched. So what's happened here is, as we can see, it's like the v has moved across six spaces to the right okay and this is what the part inside the function tells us that this tells us um, about translation horizontally so if we know that the b has to be equal to six because it's moved six spaces to the right so it's always the opposite inside the function so we know that uh, the b must be equal to six because it's moved six spaces to the right okay and we can see it's also moves one space down. That's why it says a minus one here. Okay, so that fits in. But what's happened also is it's been um, it's been stretched by a factor of um, two. Okay, so if we had left this as just y equals the modulus of x, and you move six spaces to the right, then um, basically that would have been um, a six here. Okay, but it's not a six. It's it's going to be going through eleven here. So what's happened, it's, it's also um, been stretched by a factor of 2 and then moved down one space. So it, that's, that's why it's 11 here. So basically what we need to do is 
one way to do with the next part of the question is to think about the gradient of this curve. Okay, the gradient of this line. Now, uh, let's go back to the original line. The gradient of this line here, if we think about it, it's 11 minus minus 1 over 0 minus 6, which is 12 over minus 6, which is equal to negative 2. So that's the gradient of this part, part of the line. And this part of the line would, would correspond to y equals a times, now the negative argument of this will be this side of the line, which will give you b minus x, okay, minus 1. So we can see if we expand this, we have y equals ab and minus ax and minus 1. Now this part of it will tell us the gradient. So we can see the gradient of this line is minus a. And we know the gradient of the line is actually minus 2. So we can say that therefore a must equal 2. Because if, if minus a equals minus 2, a must be 2. So we've got the values of a equals 2 and b equals 6. Now that's probably the easiest way of dealing with this, using transformations and just thinking about the gradient of this, this line. Because I can work out the gradient of this part of the line because I know points on it. So I know it's minus 2 and I know that that corresponds to the negative argument of this, which will be a times... Um, you know, minus of what's inside here, which will be b minus x. So from that, I can deduce that the, the gradient is minus ax, and I know that the gradient is minus 2, so I can say that if the gradient is minus 2, and it's also minus a, therefore, gradient is going to be 2. All right. So that's uh, one way of doing it. I'll show you another way of doing it as well, which you can use the points on the graph uh, you know, to and this equation. So we got P as 0, 11, and we got Q as 6 minus 1. Okay, if you use 0, 11 in here, now remember, uh, 0, 11 is on the part where it's got its negative argument. So the equation of the line on this, this part of the graph would be Y equals A times uh, B minus X minus 1. So 0 is the x value and 11 is the y value. So you say 11 equals a times b, b minus 0, minus 1. So we can say ab is equal to 12 from that. ab must be equal to 12 because you've got 11 equals ab minus 1. Add 1 to both sides. So that's one equation you can get from that. And if you use this point now, this point, 6 minus 1, is on both arguments. It will satisfy both the positive and the negative argument. So I could use either of them and it will still work. So let me just use the positive one. Um, so you've got y equals a times x minus b minus 1. So this point, when y is minus 1, uh, x is 0. So you have a times, you've got um, x 0 minus, so you're going to have a times minus b minus 1. And you can see here, um, a times x is equal to, sorry, what am I doing? x is equal to 6 here. Okay, so you have a times x is 6 minus b minus 1. Now we can see the minus 1s will cancel. You have 0 equals 6a minus ab. Now we know that ab is equal to 12 from that first equation. So we say 0 equals 6a minus 12. Therefore, 6a equals 12. So a equals 2. Now I wouldn't personally use this method because um, oh, if a equals 2, then we know that b is equal to, we know ab is equal to 12. So therefore, b is equal to 12 over a, which is 12 over 2, which is 6. So we found the two values, a as 2 and 6, just as we found before. I wouldn't use the second method. There's too much calculation involved. It's not really needed. It's only worth two marks. So this first method is much simpler, just thinking about the transformation of the curve. Okay, so that's um, a pretty simple one. You could have even thought about it as, you know, if this was y equals x, it would have initially gone through 6 here and 6 there. Okay, and then it's stretched vertically by a factor of 2, so this would have gone through 12. And then it's, it's gone down by one unit, so it's now gone down to 1. So if it was stretched by a factor of 2, that means the gradient would have become uh, you know, 2, minus 2 on this side. So A must be equal to 2. So there's di different ways you can deal with this type of question. Um, so that concludes now question number 4 from this paper of... Uh, June 2014, C3, and other questions from this paper when I get around to doing them will be in this playlist over here. Questions from this topic of graphs and functions from chapter from C3 or now the new P3 will be found in this playlist over here. 
and um, thank you for watching. I hope you uh, understood and I'll see you again soon.